So you want more 3D printing tips, right? Maybe you want to flex in front of the community that you know more about 3D printing than them or you want to level up your 3D printing game by printing more strong and better parts. So in today's video, I'm going to give you 5 3D printing tips that I can guarantee will going to give you more better print quality and stronger print as well. So let's begin this video. But before that, don't forget your duty to like this video. It's really important. So hit the like button and then we begin. Tip number one is pretty simple. You see this model that I've just printed? Boom. You see how easy it was to break up course. It's a quite thin model which is 5 into 5 millimeter. You can see it literally got broken from the layer lines. You might be wondering why it broke in from here, not from somewhere else. Because remember, your print is weakest among the layer line. That's why I printed this thing vertically like this, like you saw in the time, time lapse. And because of that, what happened is when you print vertically and remember one thing, your print is weakest among the layer line as I told you before. So if you print that in th that orientation, it's always going to break because it's weak. But if you just change the orientation, just use one little brain cell and change the orientation to horizontal like you're seeing on your screen. By, by doing this way, you can significantly increase the strength of your 3D printed model. Okay, so this one, I printed this one horizontally and it, I'm gonna bet you it's gonna be really hard to break this thing compared to this one. And let me show you why. This thing was printed like this, so there are no weak, there are no weak point in it. So if I try to break this, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna break, oh, it's a plastic, but it's gonna be really hard for me to break. So it got broken in a way, but not from the layer line, but actually through the walls. So obviously it's a plastic, obviously it's gonna break. But if you compare to this one, this orientation is much stronger, much better, and also much sharper because it's just not about the strength and all, it's also about the print quality. See, having a good understanding of print orientation, how you should uh, put your object on a build plate so that you require minimal support because support leaves mark on your print and that doesn't look good. So having a good understanding of print orientation that you're gonna get with the experience the more you print the more you understand about print orientation and once you understand that not, then you're always going to find some way or the other uh, if i print this model in a, this way it's going to look good it's going to require less material to print it's going to require less support to print you should have a good understanding of print orientation because it is really necessary so let's move to the next one Okay, so recently I got Land Rover Defender and the problem is after driving for one mile, a gear broke down. So I had to print one. So I designed this gear actually for my Land Rover Defender and the problem is it's too weak. Like I designed this thing, I printed it like this and then it just keeps going in. And the problem, the shaft that you're seeing on your gear is pretty weak. It just got broken from this point, like you can see it on your screen. So in order to fix that, it's pretty simple thing. Just go to Fusion 360 or whichever software you're using and go to the fillet option and expand that the area of the gear and the shaft where the gear and the shaft are connecting with each other. Just add the fillet of three millimeter, whatever the size that's suiting you. And that's it. Now it's gonna be much more stronger like this part that you're seeing. And you can see I've added the fillet in it and it will be pretty hard to break. It got broken from this point, not from the point of connection, like you're seeing on your screen. That's a pretty great thing, I would say. So try this small little hack. I know it's not that big, but it's really helpful. Let's move to the next one. So let me show you a little magic actually. So I printed this two cylinder as you saw in a time lapse. And the thing is, one will be stronger than the another and it's gonna be super, super simple. So this one is first. Actually, these two cylinders are strong. I would not say they are, they are not because I can't break, break it with my hand because of the law of physics. It's kind of small and, and I cannot like, it's super small, so it's really hard to break with the hands but it's still weak. I mean, you can't break it with the hand, but it's still weak. So what you can do to make this thing stronger? Pretty simple. I've given this hole inside, if you can see it properly, I, uh, in which we can insert this screw, actually. We can tight this thing, it's pretty tight. I mean, I, if I bang it on my table twice, it's gonna be fully inserted, or I can use a screw, but I'm kinda lazy person. 
Well, it's still hard. Wait a second, hold on. Now I got the hammer and this. So let's try again. Okay, it's pretty loud actually. So you can see, it's fully inserted now. Like you can see it on your screen. And it's now super strong. And now you cannot even break this thing with a hammer. You might break the plastic casing, which is also gonna be pretty difficult and hard to do that. But the screw is now stronger. And this is one of the tips that is pretty common, but most people don't use it. And now it's kind of heavy too. It's gonna really helpful for your Porsche and a Range Rover. So let's move to the next tip. So I printed these foot pads for my, one of my machine, but that's not the case. So the fourth tip is that I'm going to give it to you. It's like less talked tip, I would say in a 3D printing community. And it's basically the print sequence. So all you can have, all you have to do is to go to your slicer software, whichever you're using and search for print sequence and just enable that. So what this setting gonna do, it's gonna print your object one by one. Let's say there are four objects on the build plate. It, what it's gonna do, it's gonna print one object completely, then shift on another, then shift on another, then shift on another. And that's what makes it pretty risky, subjective, and you have to be cautious while applying this technique or the setting in your slicer. So I, if I have to explain this thing in a simple way, let me show it to you. So this is my Elegoo printer right here, and this is a build plate, this is a extruder system. So let's say if I'm using a print sequence setting and I have to print smaller objects, you can go bigger. So let's say this one is here, this one is here. So what now what it, it gonna do it gonna go there so first it gonna print this one right here let's say so first it printed this one then it gonna go there you have to make sure there's enough distancing and also make sure the height of this gantry because what gonna happen when it's gonna come and print here it's gonna crash and then it's gonna come out especially with the fan in my Elegoo printer so in this scenario I have to remove this thing in order to make this setting work so you have to make sure of the, the height the level of like the distance between the nozzle and this access access gantry so that there's enough spacing so that when it completes the first object and goes to another it won't crash right here and fail your print Okay, so like you saw, this is our print sequence setting work in your 3D printer. So you have to be cautious while using this setting, as I said before, and you have to be like, think like how it's gonna work well. And let's talk about the print quality. Did I saw any print quality difference? Well, I have these two models, probably not visible in the camera. I can see like one is, if you print something at one go, it's gonna print is gonna keep on rotating and rotating and keep on building other than then build one layer, then shift to the other, other corner, to, to the other, to the other, then that's, does give you a little like 1920 different that's it not much different but if you have if you face frequent stringing issues in your 3d printer then this setting is really good for you but you have to be cautious let's move to the next one I think you know what's gonna happen if you have watched my previous 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 video so i 3d printed this not handboard and you know what's gonna happen well it won't gonna fit it's a 25 millimeter nut and 25 millimeter board and if i try to fit it together boom it won't gonna fit even right now worst thing so if you know the reason behind this thing is you know 3d printing is not perfect perfect as edm cutting so when you print something your film expands something like this you're seeing on your screen so because of that you need to give tolerance between the thread of the nut as well as on the bolt so that it can fit properly so that's the thing so in the last to last to last video i told you this is the method how you can do it by manually adjusting it but in this video i'm going to give you a kind of automated way to do this thing so all you have to do is to check the link in description i provided a fusion 360 custom profiles which you can install it in fusion 360 just go to this github page it's super easy to do it's super simple just follow the instruction and once you install it just rerun your fusion 360 once you do that
So this is a 3D printed result that I just printed. And if you look at these threads, it's kind of different than the, those that we usually print in a default way. It's kind of different, but these are cool looking threads, I would say, because it's the first time I'm trying this, this 3D printed extension for these threads. So let's just try and try to put it together and see. And boom, super smooth, I would say. You can see how easy it is to tighten this thing. It's super easy, you can see. So now there you go. I gave you the solution to design perfect 3D printed threads. It's super easy to do. All you have to do, download this extension or whatever you call it, this XML file, install it in Fusion 360. Instructions are given on that GitHub page. Just follow that. So this is it for today's video. And if you're wondering, yes, I got the haircut. This part I'm recording the three, four days after. Kind of good haircut, what do you say? So this is it, goodbye. See you next video, do subscribe, bye.